What's going on, everyone? Hope you're all doing well. If you're in class or you're at home, hope everything is going well. So remember, yesterday, there were a couple people that were turned around and talking to other people during the lesson. One, one, one person, I think they were actually talking about the lesson, but it can be distracting to people. So please, like the main thing you should be doing while this video is playing is, is listening because this is where like you know the instruction comes from the teaching comes from um if you're playing like one of those mindless games probably not a big deal right i think your brains are now adjusted so that you can multitask you can listen to things but when there's something on the screen that you should be watching you really should pause that game and and look at uh what we're doing up here so Two things I want to do today. I want to preview the assessment, the Google form. I know it's not the most fun, but I think if we look at the questions before we read the poems again for the second time, I think it'll be easier. And um, I read the poems over again last night and again this morning. And the second one is starting to make more sense to me. Like I said, this is the first time I've taught these poems. So, and I don't, I don't like looking at the answer keys just because if I can't figure it out, you know, you shouldn't be forced to, to learn this stuff. But um, the second one, translating grandfather's house is definitely making more sense to me. And I'd like to talk to you about that today. And then of course, uh, hanging fire, hanging fire. I thought maybe the title Yesterday, I didn't really think about the title, but today as I read it, maybe think about the title. There's a reason it's called Hanging Fire. I don't know. But again, with poetry, so much is open to interpretation that I may read it one way and I think one way, but you might read it another way and you'll think another way. So that's the thing about poems. Some people like them. Some people hate them. Hopefully you don't hate them. But let's take a look at... Uh, some of the questions here for the Google form, it is, um, it's rather lengthy. It's like, uh, you know, 24 points. So what's your name? That shouldn't be too bad. And then let me get to the uh, preview part. So it'll look like what you see. Uh, hopefully I'm sharing it like this. I don't think I am. Yeah, hang on, let me share another screen. Okay, stop that share the one that you'll actually see because um what i had on there before was my yeah this is it what i had on there before was my you know how i can edit and stuff all right so obviously uh, what's your name and we start off with the first poem hanging fire in the first stanza, stanza we talked about stanzas yesterday like paragraphs of a poem in the first stanza, what is the speaker unhappy about? I think you get about two choices there. So please remember to restate the question. Put your answer in the form of a sentence. It is worth two points. You would do something like this, okay? And if you don't do this, you, you won't get all of the points. So please, your high school teachers are going to be looking for this. We need to start doing this more often. Some people are definitely, but... And all you have to do is like the speaker is unhappy about, and then you state your answer. You know, it'll be from the, you might have to look back at the poem. There are copies of the poem out back, or you can just put a screenshot up of uh, one of the videos that I read the poem, but the speaker is unhappy about, and then you state and if you uh, directly quote from the poem, remember, use the quotes. Where is the mama in the poem? Like three times. Each stanza ends with where the mama is about. I, I think even from one reading, you can probably get that. Uh, the next question is, what do you think is really happening with mama? No wrong answer, really. But I'm hoping that you've read the poem. You have some kind of idea. We talked about it yesterday in some classes. What does the speaker have to learn before the next party? Okay. That's for hanging fire. Translating grandfather's house. This one I think is really complex, but uh, I'm starting to like it. What is the subject 
of the speaker's first drawing. So there are two drawings that the speaker does. I, I don't think I understood that the first time I read this poem. What is the teacher's reaction to the speaker's first drawing? We actually did talk about this in class uh, yesterday. What grade does the speaker get on the second drawing? And now paragraph time. These are each worth five points. So I'm hoping that you will give us five sentences of summary. You can do it. I know you can. Please write a summary of the poem, Hanging Fire. Please write a five sentence summary of the poem, Translating Grandfather's House. Both should be five sentences, all right? If there are any questions on that, you come see me. All right, now let's take a look at, uh, make myself bigger. Let's do a different screen share, get rid of that. And then we'll actually read these poems and discuss them. But it's hard for me to do two things at once. So I need to get the other screen to share here. Yeah, boom, we got a hanging fire now. Hanging fire. I'll make this a little bit bigger here. Boom, there she is. So. Andrea Lord, I mispronounced her name yesterday. Andrea Lord, let's go. How about uh, three stanzas? Make it a little bigger, can I? Yeah. So we have a picture here. She looks rather sad, but don't always go by the picture. Sometimes I don't like it when the uh, the people who write these books give you a picture. Sometimes they help, but sometimes they just mislead. This person gonna hanging fire. Yeah, see that works. Remember this one didn't work yesterday. Translating grandfather's house. Oh, it does now. All right. Don't know what was wrong yesterday. So uh, again, as I said yesterday, hey, poems. You might want to read them. I know you probably don't want to read them, right? But you probably should read them to get the full idea of the poem. You know, four, five, six times maybe. We'll probably only read them twice in this class, I think. But, I mean, spend some time with these poems. Reread them on your own. Uh, they're not easy. The first one's a little easier than the second one, but still. All right, let's share here. Boom. There we go. I'm 14. And my skin has betrayed me. Right. I want to talk about that line for a second. I love this. And I felt bad. Eight. Hey, when I was in middle school, I think I would have loved to have worn a mask because my skin betrayed me. I had zits all over the place. It was not a pretty picture, not a pretty picture. But often when you're a teenager, your skin does betray you. Like right before school picture day, big zit on the nose. That happened to me, I promise. And I think it was a, a combination of uh, just, you know, puberty, whatever. And then um, nervousness, school picture day. I think one of the big school dances in high school, pfft, big zit right on the nose. My skin betrayed me. Hopefully your skin doesn't betray you, but I am 14 and my skin betrayed me. The boy I cannot live without still sucks his thumb in secret. That's not easy to say, still sucks his thumb in secret. A lot of S's there. Anybody would know what we call that? That part of figurative language where you use the same sound over and over in a sentence it is alliteration alliteration how come my knees are always so ashy what if i die before morning and mom is in the bedroom with the door closed i have to learn how to dance in time for the next party my room is too small for me suppose i die before graduation they will sing sad melodies but finally, tell the truth about me. There's nothing I want to do and too much that has to be done. And mom is in the bedroom with the door closed. Nobody even stops to think about my side of it. I should have been on the math team, though I added a the there. I should have been on math team. My marks were better than his. Why do I have to be the one wearing braces? I have nothing to wear tomorrow. Will I live long enough to grow up? And mom is in the bedroom with the door closed. So you can see that is almost like a song. Um, in, in a song, we, we call it a chorus. Words that are repeated. It's the chorus, the, you know, the main hook of the song or whatever. This 
doesn't have a course, but it does have repetition and authors or sorry, poets often will use repetition. So, and notice here where I added a the, uh, as I said before yesterday, poets will spend a lot of time making sure each syllable is correct so it flows in a, the way they want it. So you can read that over again. I encourage you to, I encourage you to almost, I would never ask you to memorize anything in this class, but I think the more you read it, the more you will pick up on little things. Let me, let me talk about something that I picked up on um, as I read this for a third time. Um, or probably more than that, uh, right here. Why do I have to be the one wearing braces? And I think we do this, even adults do this, whatever. Um, we think we're the only one, you know, but if you look around, there are quite a few people who are going to orthodontists appointments, not easy to say, you know, they have to wear braces. So it's way more common, but when it's you, it definitely feels more like it's just you. So I think pretty typical of teenagers, you know, you think people are watching you all the time. In reality, it's like most people really don't care. They're too caught up in their own lives, but it is tough in middle school because, hey, you make one wrong move, somebody's going to catch it and they'll probably make fun of you for it for a couple days just because everybody else is so insecure. You know, they're worried about looking bad. So the second they see somebody else do something, you know, slip in the mud or whatever, like, oh, yeah, yeah. let's let's talk about them. So people aren't talking about me. Yeah, that's how it goes. All right. The uh, the next one here. This one's definitely way more difficult. I didn't want to do that. You don't have to see me. Let's get rid of me. This one is way more difficult. But after reading it a couple times and I'll still probably trip over this word. Paul Menino. Ah, Tiana taught me how to say that and I forgot. I will do my best because the meter, the rhythm has to be perfect and I will probably mess it up. But all right. So translating grandfather's house. I think this is important. The title again in this one, I didn't mention the hanging fire title. Hopefully you will um, maybe put one and one together and, and make two out of that. But translating grandfather's house. Oh man, maybe, maybe I will talk a bit more about this one because it is so um, difficult, but I wish I knew, I wish I could remember who said it in class. I can't remember if it's you, let me know. Uh, but somebody said they think this poem is about being different. I would totally agree. I would totally agree. Okay. I'll go over this one a little bit more. You probably think what don't come on. Come on. I don't even care. Some people, I think some people in here care. So I'm going to pretend that everybody cares. Okay, here we go. Let's make it big. So it seems like in this class, the teacher, maybe it's an art class. I don't know. The teacher asked them, hey, draw a building, you know, or draw your parents' house or draw your grandparents' house, something like that. Okay, so let's go through this here. According to my sketch, Rows of lemon and mango trees frame the courtyard of grandfather's stone and clapboard home. All right, there is a little semicolon there, so I'm going to pause. Let's read it again. According to my sketch, rows of lemon and mango trees frame the courtyard of grandfather's stone and clapboard home. Okay, so this person is drawing a home. It's got mango and lemon trees all around it, framing it. It's just like a picture frame. It means it's like on the perimeter. It's on the outside of the uh, the land that they own probably. All right. So remember the setting of this poem. It seems like it's New York City. So as the teacher is going around, the teacher is going to see this drawing. It's like, come on, this is supposed to be a realistic drawing. And the teacher is probably thinking, like there are no homes that look like this, at least in New York City. Okay, so keep that in mind. So the author is not lying or the poet is not lying. 
It's their grandfather's house. I'm thinking there might be a language barrier too, that this person can't express themselves with English. They might, they might speak a different language. All right, let's make it bigger. Let's get me out of the way here. The shadow of a palmomino, that's not right, gallops on the lip of the horizon. I like that lip of the horizon. That's kind of cool. Okay, so you got a horse somewhere in the background. The teacher says the house is from some Zorro movie I've seen. So I don't know if the teacher is a, a man or a woman, but the teacher doesn't like it. As I'm reading this, I'm just assuming it's a woman, but it could be a guy. No, I don't want to assume too much. It could be a guy. Ask mom, I protest. She was born there, right there on the second floor. So my idea about English being a barrier, no. It seems like this person can actually speak English. My bad, my bad. Crossing her arms, she moves on. And as I mentioned yesterday, um, that is definitely some body language and people aren't happy. So it's an inference. The author doesn't come out and say that the teacher doesn't believe this person. I keep saying him too for the speaker, but it might not be. Um, you know, so it doesn't look like uh, this person's going to get a very good grade. Hopefully you want to get good grades too. But the, this art project's not going to do well for this person. All right. Crossing her arms, she moves on. Memories, once certain as rivets, become confused as awakenings in strange places. And I question the house, the horse, the wrens perched on the slate roof. The roof Oscar Jarden tumbled from one hot Tuesday, installing a new weather vane. He broke a shin and two fingers. Classmates finished drawings of New York City housing projects on Navy Street. I draw one too, with wild grass rising from sidewalk cracks like widows. In big round letters, I title it Grandfather's House. Beaming, the teacher scrawls an A plus in the corner and tapes it to the green blackboard, to the green blackboard. Not sure. I don't I don't know. This came up in several classes. It's it's a blackboard, but it's green. I, yeah, I don't know. Don't get too caught up on that. I don't know. I don't, I don't think that is significant in any way, but this definitely seems like the teacher wants to try to make the poet or the speaker or the, or the drawer, whatever you want to call this person, just like everybody else. And the only way that they can get approval is if they draw just like everybody else, if they come become just like everybody else. And there is a stanza in there that where this person is actually now confused because the teacher, because the teacher doesn't approve of the drawing, they are questioning themselves. They're like, oh, maybe that isn't right. That isn't right. And so this could have a whole, I mean, this, I don't want to get too deep on this poem, but it could be where, um, you know, people who are different, you know, even in education or whatever, um, students, you know, we try to make everybody just like the next person. And that's the only way you can get approval or you can get good grades, something like that. We might be able to discuss this a little bit more in detail later, but it can be a very deep poem. I encourage you to reread it on your own. I think there is a lot that I still don't understand about this poem. The more I read it, the more I will understand the same for you. But I think at the very least, you have enough information and that you can do those, uh, that, that Google form, that Google form for second quarter. Remember, more grades will be coming in for second quarter. I think the next one, if it's not already in, will be two, two, two. Okay, so make sure you have that done. Quiz number four, study guide number four, study guide number five. All right, that's it for today. Probably have about 10 minutes left of class. Please use that time wisely. Please start working on the two poems. How about that?